Many people find orbital mechanics confusing. They think, how does burning away from something make you go towards it? They ask how going away from the sun allows you to dive into it more efficiently. In this video, I will answer all those questions and more as clearly and concisely as possible. In orbit, there is very little drag and effectively no gravity because things are traveling so quickly that they miss the planet that they are revolving towards. This means that motion and how things travel is vastly different from here on Earth's surface. When a car changes the direction that it is facing, its velocity changes so that it is still moving in the direction that it is facing. If a spacecraft changes the direction that it is facing, its velocity will stay the same. Because when a car turns, the ground will rub against its tires and kill off the velocity that it once had, while the wheels will spin and push it in the direction that it is now facing. When spacecraft turn, they keep all the velocity that they originally had and are just adding to this velocity with their engines. If a spacecraft performs a burn, the side of its orbit that is affected most by that burn is the opposite side of its orbit. This is because at any given moment in time, an object is motionless. Any changes that a spacecraft performs are actually changing where it will be, not where it is. The opposite side of the spacecraft's orbit is the farthest away from where the spacecraft is, so its orbit will have the most time to change before it reaches that point. Also, the higher you raise an orbit, the easier it is to raise that orbit because the farther you are from a planet, the less gravity there is. In the recent Mars 2020 launch, the Perseverance rover spent the vast majority of its escape burn trying to raise its orbit out of Earth's sphere of influence, and only the final dregs of fuel were needed to shove the rover out to Mars. Also in that launch, you may have noticed that the rover's periapsis, or lowest point, was much closer to the surface of Earth than its apoapsis, or highest point. That is because of the Oberth effect. The Oberth effect states that burns are more efficient the closer a craft's periapsis is to a planet. This is because mechanical energy is equal to potential energy plus kinetic energy. Kinetic energy increases when an object's speed increases. A periapsis is the part of an orbit where an object is going faster because as you go up towards your apoapsis, you exchange kinetic energy for potential energy. As you come back down, gravity accelerates you so you lose gravitational potential energy and gain kinetic energy. Once the craft is at periapsis, it begins to burn. So now the fuel has more mechanical energy, so it is capable of doing more work. However, not all burns at periapsis are more efficient. A lot of the time, burning at apoapsis is more efficient despite the losses of mechanical energy. This is because an apoapsis is the slowest part of an orbit, so you need less fuel to drastically change your velocity. For example, if you wanted to perform a plane change burn, you would perform it at apoapsis, because at periapsis you would be going, say, three times faster? This is an arbitrarily determined number, and it's no way based on reality, so it would take approximately three times the work to have the same effect. Of course, all that is helpful if you want to spend less fuel, which is something that most spacecraft engineers want their spacecraft to do. I don't know why they wouldn't want to spend less fuel, but anyway, many of you are probably still wondering, how do you rendezvous, or meet up with another object in space? Here on planet Earth, with intuitive physics, it is hard to collide moving objects. In orbit, it must be several orders of magnitude more difficult. In low orbit around a planet, the most common way to perform a rendezvous is by performing a plane change maneuver. This is the maneuver used to align two orbits so that they have the same inclination. They are usually performed at the equator and are performed by pointing straight vertically along the axis of a planet, either north-ish or south-ish. By pointing along the axis of a planet, the spacecraft adds a vertical component to their velocity that they didn't have before. During or after the plane change maneuver, the spacecraft lines up for a final approach orbit. This is when the spacecraft burns in the opposite direction of its target until its orbit either becomes higher or lower than the orbit of its target. A spacecraft will enter a higher orbit if it is ahead of its target, because as we discussed earlier, higher orbits are slower because as you go up, gravity takes away some of your speed, so you end up going slower, which will give your target time to catch up. If a spacecraft is behind its target, it will enter a faster, lower orbit. Spacecraft also use a different kind of rendezvous technique called the Hohmann transfer. Hohmann transfers are primarily used in situations where a craft's target is in a completely different orbit. Hohmann transfers are elliptical orbits that intersect their target orbit. The craft and the target will both arrive at that intersection at the same time. Hohmann transfers are most commonly used to send craft to other celestial bodies. Speaking of other celestial bodies, it is time to talk about the physics behind leaving our home planet, Earth. It's also the only planet that we live on. Earth is orbiting the sun, just like how the moon is orbiting the Earth. 
If a craft leaves Earth's sphere of influence, it automatically retains all of the velocity that Earth had, plus any additional velocity that it still had at the time when it left Earth. However, leaving Earth at different parts of its orbit has different effects because velocity has vectors. For example, if you left Earth in the direction that Earth is going, then your velocity is added to Earth, which is what you would do when going to Mars. But if you left on Earth's opposite side, your velocity would be subtracted from Earth, which is what you would want to do if you were going to Venus. Changing the vector that you leave Earth on is functionally the same as doing a burn in that direction. Finally, we have something called a gravity assist. A gravity assist is when a spacecraft flies by a celestial body to adjust their velocity. Basically what happens is that the spacecraft gains no velocity relative to that planet, but it experiences a change in velocity after leaving that planet's sphere of influence. Contrary to popular belief, the spacecraft has stolen energy from the planet, so every time a gravity assist happens, the planet that is being flown by is losing kinetic energy. But planets are so large that you can't really see any of these changes. You could also think of a planet like a floor, and a spacecraft as a ball. If there was no friction, that ball would bounce back to the same height after hitting the floor. However, if the floor was moving, then the ball would either lose or gain energy depending on the direction that the floor was moving. Have a nice day and don't die!